the application of S-Class luxury values into the most exclusive part of the large convertible segment has brought us a truly grand conveyance. The fact that no other open-topped car offers as much space for four people has always been this S-Class Cabriolet's biggest draw, but in this revised form, there's more. A motive V8 power, even more exquisite cabin finishing and class-leading media and safety technology. Something for the heart, something for the head, something really special. Mercedes are no stranger to big four-seat convertibles, but in its launch in 2015, this S-Class Cabriolet was in fact the first really large, full-luxury, open-top four-seater that the brand had produced since 1971. The first car since then to return the Stuttgart brand to the kind of exotic convertible sector populated by brands like Bentley and Aston Martin. In 2018, this model was significantly improved, and that is a version that we're going to look at here. Mercedes-Benz has a long and rich history of producing open-topped luxury models with the heritage of making them that goes right back to the 1920s. Now, most of these cars were exclusive conveyances for the money delete, and that's a market the company signaled it would be returning to when, in 2006, it produced an eye-catching open-topped ocean drive design study for the motor show circuit. The aristocracy was quick to form an orderly queue for the production A217 series version, which eventually arrived with S-Class Cabriolet badging nine years later. It's unlikely that you're going to be buying one of these because you can't quite afford a Bentley Continental GTC or an Aston Martin DB11 Volante, but V8 versions of this Mercedes do remain significantly more affordable than both those cars. Mind you, the same could also be said of this model's more recently launched arch rival, the BMW 8 Series convertible. Mercedes thinks that their contender is a more exotic thing and it's likely to appeal to a slightly different kind of buyer. You might buy the BMW if you'd won the lottery, uh, a likely S-Class Cabriolet customer, in contrast, probably wouldn't need to have won the lottery to fund this premium purchase. In which case, you might well ask, why wouldn't such a person go ahead and buy the apparently more exclusive Bentley or Aston Cabriolet models that we just mentioned, rather than something with a more familiar badge? Well, with this revised S-Class Cabriolet, Mercedes hopes to more effectively answer that question. The car now looks a little more special, and its new interior now has a level of cabin technology that a Continental GT or DB11 owner could only dream about. And the same is also true of this car's autonomous driving tech and the level of efficiency that you'll get from its fresh pair of V8 engines. Plus, as before, you get the world's largest fabric folding top, and that's needed because because this car can properly seat a couple of adults in the back in a way that its competitors would struggle to do. All then good reasons why this convertible might be a clever choice in its class and a very desirable way to reward yourself for a lifetime of endeavour. Let's put it to the test. It is possible to specify an S-Class Cabriolet in a form that goes very fast indeed, but in truth, uh, it's not the kind of car in which you'd really want to rush. Better to throttle back and savour the calming, classy way that this Mercedes eases you to your destination, removed from the bustle and noisiness of the outside world. Now, you could conceivably compare the experience to that offered up by a rival Bentley or BMW, but it might just as easily put your mind at the kind of feeling that would be delivered by Progress on a large large, expensive super yacht. Now, fortunately, it doesn't handle like one of those. Uh, actually, you can hustle this car through the corners with a surprising level of vigour, although the rather lifeless steering hides the real extent of this model's tractional reserves. Now, on that subject, we were disappointed to find that the Stuttgart maker still hasn't managed to find a way of engineering 4MATIC four-wheel drive into right-hand drive versions of this car. It's been available on the left-hand drive model since this design's original launch. Now, that puts this Mercedes at a disadvantage to its most direct 8 Series convertible and Continental GT rivals for winter motoring, or possibly for that annual trip up to your Alpine ski lodge. 
Now staying with established S-Class features that you can't have here, uh, packaging constraints means that the curved tilting function that dials out cornering body roll in top variants of the coupe version of this car isn't offered. And S-Class Cabriolet buyers also can't have the brand's clever magic body control damping system either. That's a clever setup that on the top versions of the saloon body style uses a stereo camera to scan the road, pre-adapting the suspension to meet changes in the road surface. All these things would certainly enhance this car's ownership proposition, but even as it is, uh, that is pretty complete, particularly since a mid-term heart transplant that has transformed the engine offerings available to customers of this model. At the launch of the original version of this car back in 2015, the core S-Class Cabriolet range for our market was based around a couple of V8s, both mated to a freshly developed 9G Tronic 9-speed gearbox, namely an entry-level 455 HP 4.7 litre unit for the base S500 and a 585 HP 5.5 litre power plant for the alternative Mercedes-AMG S63 variant. Now, following the update package three years on, the same transmission setup was retained, uh, but both those engines have been ditched in favour of the lighter, more efficient and more responsive 4-litre twin-turbo unit that Mercedes now seems to use in the fastest versions of almost everything it makes. Now, partly that's because this power plant can be tuned in so many ways. Uh, in the new base S560 version of this car that we're trying here, it develops uh, 469 horsepower, and in the S63, you're looking at 612 horsepower. That's nearly 100 horsepower more than the same engine uh, puts out in that variant's pricey arrival, the Aston Martin DB11 Volante. Were we to be considering an S-Class Cabriolet, uh, we'd certainly be attracted by the S63 model, for sure. AMG fettling for the transmission, the damping, the steering and the brakes makes that top V8 variant a more responsive performance tool. Plus, you get race start launch control for Grand Prix style acceleration from rest and a sports exhaust system with gloriously emotive selectable sound control. But then, if we wanted a more responsive performance sports convertible with a three-pointed star on the bonnet, then we'd probably prefer to spend uh, the same kind of money on either an AMG GT Roadster or a Mercedes-AMG version of the brand's classic SL sports car, all of which might leave us reverting back to the S560 Cabriolet that we're trying here. It's 4.6 second rest to 62 miles an hour sprint time, is less than half a second slower than the S63, and both cars are limited to the same 155 Five miles an hour maximum speed, although with the AMG model you can pay Mercedes an obscene amount of extra money to rather pointlessly raise that to 186 miles an hour. In truth, you can't go too far wrong with either of those options, and you probably won't really need us to tell you that both stack up far better in every regard than the only other available S-Class Cabriolet option offered in our market, the Mercedes-AMG S65 model. Now, this 630 horsepower variant continues to use the heavy, old, afalterback fettled 6-litre V12 mated to that tuning division's equally old 7-speed speed shift plus 7G Tronic auto gearbox. The 62 miles an hour from rest time, 4.1 seconds, is fractionally faster than an S63, but in every meaningful real-world regard, an S65 would be the slower of those two models on anything except a runway or an autobahn. But as we've already said, this isn't a car that uh, naturally takes kindly to being thrown about, even in its sportier forms. In designing it, Mercedes had other priorities, going to a huge amount of trouble to ensure not only that you can comfortably fit two fully sized adults in the back, but also that these people will be uh, untroubled by open top turbulence and be easily able to converse with those in the front. Uh, that's been achieved here not only by exemplary engine refinement and sleek aerodynamics, but also by a combination of the brand's usual air cap wind deflector which rises above the windscreen frame and a smaller deflector fitted between the rear head restraints. The results will be best appreciated by those in the rear but uh, throughout the car even at close to three figure speeds it contributes to a haven of bluster free piece that few drop tops can match at any price. Uh, Mercedes claims that it's possible to have a normal phone conversation in the car roofed down at 125 miles an hour. Well 
will take their word for that. But it's certainly true that uh, with heated seats and Mercedes clever air scarf, warm air, neck level vents comfortably cosseting your neck, uh, you're looking here at a convertible that you could easily find yourself using al fresco all year round. Well, at least when the sun's out. Now, further helping here is the way that the climate control system automatically adjusts itself for open air motoring. There's no need to select a separate mode button when you have the roof down or to save specific temperature settings. Now you'd be pleased to find that when you want to put the roof up, you don't have to slow to an embarrassing crawl to do that. Uh, the triple layered hoods uh, electric mechanism can function at speeds up to 40 miles an hour and it completes its acrobatics in 20 seconds. Uh, now once it's up, you'll get yourself as quiet a convertible as we've ever experienced. In fact, at highway speeds, when you're traveling roof up, we found it difficult to discern any difference in refinement between this car and its fixed top coupe counterpart. Highway motoring is of course where this S-Class Cabriolet will be in its element, thanks in part to this car's standard airmatic air suspension. And this system uses pneumatic bags in place of traditional steel springs to cushion the car from the tarmac surface, uh, something that you're most aware of over sharp road undulations and things like speed humps and drain covers. For the rest of the time, the whole setup simply creates a supremely cosseting feel and it can make motorway journeys feel like a magic carpet ride. Uh, the system automatically lowers the car by 15 millimeters at speeds uh, over 75 miles an hour to reduce aerodynamic drag and if you're driving up ramps or at low speeds over rougher roads it enables you to raise the ride height by 35 millimeters. Damping is, as you'd expect, one of the elements that you can adjust via the settings of this car's dynamic select driving mode system. Uh, the usual comfort, eco, sport and sport plus options also change steering feel, uh, throttle response, gear shift timings and stability control thresholds. Or there's an individual screen that allows you to tailor your own personal drive, suspension, steering and ESP settings. Uh, possibly of greater interest to likely S-Class Cabriolet buyers though is this car's capability when it comes to semi-autonomous driving. To make sure that this S-Class is state-of-the-art in that regard, Mercedes has embellished the Drive Pilot technology it introduced a few years back with navigational algorithms that come as part of what it calls route-based speed adjustment, a system that's available at part of the extra cost driving assistance package. Now these anticipate traffic conditions and prepare this Mercedes in advance for roundabouts, corners and junctions. So for example, the car will automatically slow down when you're nearing a toll booth or a motorway exit. And if you're approaching a queue of traffic that started to move, it'll slow to seamlessly match the speed of that tailback. Apparently, the new technology also allows the autonomous system to function on a wider range of roads, although we still wouldn't recommend that you use it on anything other than a dual carriageway. Now, assuming that you have the optional pack fitted, it'll all work once you've activated the sophisticated Active Distance Assist Distronic Cruise Control and pressed these two little buttons to the right of the wheel, one for Active Steering Assist and the other for Active Lane Keeping Assist. Now, with all this working, the car is fully ready to drive itself, although it will demand that you prove that you're paying attention by clutching the steering wheel every few seconds. A uh, particular party piece is the Active Lane changing assist system which will allow your S-Class Cabriolet to overtake by itself with just a jab of the indicator stalk and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Now all this stuff's important because, for the time being anyway, you simply can't have it on the exotic branded rivals. And by the time you can, Mercedes will have come up with something better. In this segment, the S-Class Cabriolet has always offered something better. More interior space, greater refinement and yes, extra technology. But buying decisions on cars in this class are usually made on less logical criteria than that and you sense that with this revised open-topped Sonda class model Mercedes begin to grasp this of huge importance especially in a convertible is the orchestral accompaniment from beneath the bonnet now the new VH provide that the finishing touch for a car that might conceivably also be the finishing touch to the automotive part of your life
car of this kind needs to look opulent and exclusive, and most will agree that this one does. Like its coupe counterpart, the S-Class Cabriolet has been styled around what Mercedes calls a theme of sensual purity, something the stylists have aimed to emphasise, both with the sculpted lines of the long fluted bonnet, which incorporates this pronounced power dome, and also with a low glass house that features this high belt line. The result is a car that's visually unique in the Stuttgart Makers lineup, and it'll fit right in alongside the Bentleys and Aston Martins at the golf club. Now, before we get on to further specifics of the exterior design here, we should start by telling you a little about the fully automatic acoustic fabric folding top, the largest fitted to any convertible model in the world. As you can see uh, on the outside, this multi-layered roof has been finished in dark blue here, but you could alternatively select a hood in either black, beige or dark red to suit the paintwork that you've chosen. Now, you activate it via the uh, silvered outer button in this trio of switches inside the storage area between the seats and the opening or closing process takes 20 seconds with operation possible at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Now a particularly nice touch is the way that you can also activate this roof mechanism using the key fob. So if you're across the street from your S-Class Cabriolet sipping a coffee and you're admiring this car in its roof retracted form and then the heavens open, you can casually uh, raise the hood without shifting from your seat. Brilliant. When retracted, the folded canopy is stored in its own boot compartment, separated from the rest of the trunk by a retractable cartridge. More on that later though. As for the other two black switches, surrounded by this main control button, well, one retracts all four windows in one action, while the other engages the air cap draft stop mechanism, which raises this rather ugly contraption on the windscreen header rail. And that works in concert with this neat little wind deflector between the rear seats and both features are undeniably effective in reducing buffeting at speed in the cabin. Well, that's enough on the roof. What about the rest of the design? Well, the changes made to this revised model are most noticeable here at the front, which adopts uh, an evolved front apron with what the designers call a jet wing look. Now, that's embellished on this S560 variant by a chrome-plated front splitter and these fins in the corner air intakes, while the Mercedes-AMG variants get an altogether meaner demeanor thanks to the adoption of a more bespoke apron and the vertically slatted Panamerica grille from the Mercedes-AMG GT sports car. All S-Class Cabriolets get full LED headlights with dual-like eyebrows made up of these little high-tech bulbs, but this one has the optional stylistic feature that we think you just have to have with this car. Uh, the two main front lamps are decorated with no fewer than 47 Swarovski crystals, there to create an exotic lighting signature that you'll never tire of admiring. It's a pretty finishing touch on what is otherwise a superior, self-confident front end that it's very different from that of an S-Class saloon. It's finished on this S560 by a three-dimensional diamond-shaped front grille uh, spanned by a single louvre that has the Mercedes three-pointed star at its centre, and that's positioned against a background of chrome-plated pins. Not much has changed from a profile perspective, apart from a slight restyling of the side skirts. Uh, there's a lot to take in as you study the mixture of convex and concave surfaces uh, that give both the coupe and cabriolet versions of this Sonda Classe model a taut, poised appearance. Primarily, there's this distinctive falling swage line that runs from the front wing and past the door handle before fading into the rear haunches. Uh, now, that stylized crease is contrasted against this rising line that sweeps up from the sills and punches straight through the back wheel arches which frame the beautifully forged AMG alloys and those are available in either 19 or 20 inch sizes. It's a shape that constantly catches the light in different ways and it looks good in both pale and dark colours. As does the rear of the car with its chamfered surfaces, broad shoulders and a chromed character line that links the two-piece LED tail lamps. Now yes, uh, these tail lamps are the key change from this perspective with this revised model. They now feature innovative OLED or organic light emitting diode technology that uses 66 ultra flat rectangular slivers to create an utterly distinctive nighttime signature which also delivers its own unique dynamic light sequences 
as you activate the locking process. Otherwise, uh, things are much as before. The location of the number plate in the lower part of the bumper allows a particularly clean finish and greater prominence for the three-pointed star that pivots outwards when the need arises to use the reverse parking camera. Four trapezoidally shaped chrome plated exhausts flank this lightly revised intricately fashioned lower diffuser. Uh, on the Mercedes AMG performance models the tailpipes are larger and that diffuser gains a ribbed centre section. Of course as usual what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. Uh, now the convertible construction required quite a lot of extra body strengthening. Uh, the weight penalty for that the development team tried to mitigate with widespread use of aluminium. So the exterior looks right. What about the cabin? Well, let's pull back this frameless door with its acoustically double glazed glass and take a look. As you take a seat, allow your restraint buckle to be graciously delivered by the electrically extending belt buckler and look around. You'll take in the way that the design team has moved to differentiate this car from its four-door stablemate in an attempt to create more of a kind of wraparound effect that cabriolet buyers will be looking for. Uh, it's not been easy to achieve this. The front passenger airbag, for example, has had to be moved to a completely different and lower location. But the end result just about delivers the superior grand touring ambiance that this price point requires. Uh, specified correctly, as in this case with the pricey optional quilted exclusive Nappa leather package, it can feel very high-end indeed. Despite the fact that most of the main elements are the same as those found on the kind of entry-level S-Class saloon that you could buy for half as much. Still, on this revised model, that does mean you get the brand's sophisticated widescreen cockpit. Two 12.3-inch high-resolution TFT displays. Uh, the one more dismissive colleague once described as looking like a couple of iPads shunted together. Uh, we actually think they look rather sleek, with wondrous graphics that make those on some rival infotainment systems look very old-fashioned. Uh, the screen, directly ahead of the driver, performs all the functions that you expect from a conventional instrument cluster. Uh, most of the other information that you'll need is to be found on the centre dash screen and that delivers the bewildering functionality promised by Mercedes command infotainment system. Now to be fair this isn't bad in its user friendliness but there's a heck of a lot of depth to it that uh, some buyers just won't take the time to learn. You oversee quite a few of the functions of this double screen arrangement via these neat little smartphone style touch pads on the rather plain looking three spoke Nappa leather trim steering wheel. Uh, these now also deal with the cruise control, so making unnecessary the awkward old column stalk that featured for that purpose on the original version of this car. Now using these little pads, you can customize the digital instrument display ahead of you via three settings. Uh, the classic and sport layouts give you two virtual dials, or you can choose the so-called progressive setup that focuses on one gauge, uh, the bottle of which can uh, depict a neat safety assistance graphic if required. You can set up the right of the instrument monitor to show a rev counter, navigation information, uh, trip computer info, uh, g-force meter or an eco display which will help you to drive more efficiently. The main area of infotainment provision though is this Centre Dash Command infotainment screen. Now given that this is the Stuttgart brand's flagship and supposedly most technologically advanced design, it does seem a bit strange that it doesn't yet feature the company's most advanced MBUX multimedia system with its touchpad operating setup. Now that is being refined for the next generation version of this model. So for the time being, buyers continue to be served by the brand's usual stylized protuberance between the seats that looks like an auto gear stick but isn't. Um, it's a setup that regular Benz buyers will be very familiar with. It manages all your infotainment needs with a rotary dial that swivels, slides and pushes below a higher surface touchpad that allows letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right hand drive model of course there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand. If you can master all that, you'll quickly find that there's a huge amount of content on the command monitor. Uh, particularly nice are the vehicle sections that give you engine data dials and a vehicle data section that shows acceleration and braking pressure, uh, steering angles and your air suspension setting. Plus, of course, you can tailor your preferred driving settings via the Dynamic Select Driving Mode system. Uh, there is Linguatronic voice control and all the usual DAB audio infotainment stuff too, of course. 
source. In this case, with the Burmester sound system as standard, uh, there's also 3D mapping and live traffic information. Plus, you can connect in your smartphone via the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay systems. It's also possible to create an integrated WLAN, that's Wireless Local Area Network Hotspot. In addition, uh, the package provides a media segment that gives you a web browser for things like Facebook and a useful MB app section. Now this includes weather reports, access to internet radio and a useful local search function that allows you to find anything from a filling station to a fish restaurant, uh, a passenger terminal to a parking space. But enough on media connectivity, just savour the quality. Getting the specification right to coordinate the colours and textures is key when you're buying this car. So take your time and if in doubt, go for the conservative option. Get a bit more expressive and things can go German fashion quite quickly, which is rarely a good thing. As you might expect, almost everything that can be leather lined is, including this broad stitched stowage area top between the seats that can, like the door armrests, be gently heated as part of the warmth comfort package that most S-Class Cabriolets are likely to feature. As usual with larger Mercedes models, the dash is decorated with stylized silver vents, four small ones in the centre, flanked by larger ones at each corner, operated by grooved organ stop controls. It all looks good, but when you touch one of these outlets, you'll find that the painted plastic lacks the cool, classy feel of the proper metal vents you get in a rival Bentley or Aston Martin. That aside, though, it's difficult to argue with the attention to detail here. Classy features that will resonate with this car's intended clientele include real wood inlays, we've got black poplar here, ornate speaker grills and an ambient lighting setup with no fewer than 64 configurable colours. And of course, you're surrounded with lustrous buttery leather with some of the most beautifully supportive seats that we've ever tried. Now they can cool and massage you and they feature head level air scarf vents that channel warming air onto your neck so you can comfortably drive top down on winter mornings. A fresh optional feature developed for this revised model that Mercedes is especially proud of is the energizing comfort package. Now this is built as a one-touch route to complete interior serenity, delivering six preset programs. These are the rather cringingly named refresh, warmth, vitality, joy, and well-being settings that coordinate different elements of cabin atmosphere. Things like climate control, music and interior lighting, uh, fragrance dispensing and seat heating, cooling and massage. Plus there's a training option that has you doing little exercises in the seat to keep you fresh and alert as you drive. Stressed CEOs are gonna love that. Uh, unfortunately, the optional air balance fragrance dispenser that can be incorporated as part of that whole setup takes up an inordinate amount of space in the air conditioned glove box. Uh, there is a pen clip and a coin holder in that area too. Another practical issue lies in the rather cluttered nature of this uh, central storage box between the seats here, which incorporates twin USB and SD card slots along with the wireless phone charging mat. The twin cup holders ahead of the infotainment controller and the 12 volt port and stowage ledge cited just above uh, can be covered away when not in use by this lovely damped sliding top. The door bins aren't very big though, but on the plus side, there's a beautifully damped slide out drawer at the base of the center stack. There's an overhead compartment for your sunglasses and both ticket clips and vanity mirrors are incorporated into both sun visors. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, given the changeable nature of our country's climate, you'll probably be using these rear seats more frequently than the roofs up, so we'll raise the hood for this section. Now, the key question that we have to address here concerns the issue of whether the prodigious size of this A217 Series S-Class Cabriolet, it's well over five metres long, 181 mils lengthier than an E-Class Cabriolet, will be enough to make it pretty much the only four-seater convertible in the world in which fully sized adults can be truly comfortable on longer trips. Now, as with most open top cars, the door here is very long. So when you're 
opening it wide enough to access the back seat, it's easy to inadvertently bash it against some sort of solid object. Getting into the back is obviously going to be uh, quite a lot more difficult when the roof is up like this, but even then you'll be aided by this design's generous uh, body height and by the way that the front seat automatically slides forward out of your way uh, when you pull on the catch on the seat shoulder, although the mechanism is a bit slow. Now once you're seated and you pull the front seat back towards you, the electric mechanism is clever enough to slide back towards your knees without crushing them. Uh, though as now you couldn't really stretch and luxuriate back here by convertible standards, this part of the car really is very spacious indeed. It's certainly a significant step up from the kind of room that you get in an E-Class Cabriolet, or perhaps more pertinently, what you'd find in competing models like BMW's 8 Series convertible or the open top version of Bentley's Continental GT. Scalloped front seat backs help with knee room and that tall body height translates into an impressive amount of headroom. It's pretty much the same as you get in the coupe variant. Uh, there are no door pockets but you do get sprung seat back pockets and there's a lidded stowage area incorporated into this centre armrest along with clip out cup holders. Uh, this twin lidded stowage area in the middle of the seat base incorporates a couple of 12 volt ports though no USB point. Uh, there's a further small stowage area underneath these twin silvered centre air vents. Uh, these keep you cool, floor vents under the front chairs and heated seats back here keep you warm. There are overhead reading lights and you get the same high standards of fit and finish that feature at the front. There's stitch trimming, uh, glossy wood inlays and classy Burmester stereo speaker grills. You even get speakers embedded into the backs of the front head restraints. Now let's finish by taking a look uh, in the boot, the lid for which is of course power and gesture operated. Now the fabric top won't operate unless this boot separator cartridge box is in its lower position, which it typically won't be if you've been recently using the car with the roof up on journeys where you've needed to maximise cargo space. Now a nice touch with current model uh, Mercedes Cabriolets though lies in the way that the car is able to uh, sense that situation and automatically lower the boot separator if you've forgotten to do that. When the roof is up, this button on the inside of the boot lid allows you to raise the boot separator manually. Do that and boot capacity rises from just 250 litres to a far more acceptable 350. Uh, that's just 50 litres less than you get in an S-Class Coupe. To give you some class perspective, this Cabriolet model's total potential luggage capacity uh, is the same as a BMW 8 Series convertible and it's 80 litres more than you get in a rival Aston Martin DB11 Volante. Now that is the kind of gain that could make all the difference when it comes to packing for a romantic weekend away or the kind of transcontinental jaunt to the south of France where this S-Class would be in its element. Given the capacity constraints here you won't be surprised to find that uh, when you lift up the boot floor there's no space saver spare wheel provided and you can't even specify one as an option. However this does free up some extra compartmentalized space around the tyre inflation kit. Uh, the main boot area is accessed via a reasonably high uh, loading lip featuring this silver trimming plate that'll scratch easily. A 12 volt socket is provided on the right, a netted storage area is available to you on the left. Uh, now a really nice touch is the way that lights are built into the inside of the boot lid. Uh, white ones to shine down into the cargo area and red ones for safety if you're accessing the boot on a busy road at night. Now unfortunately you don't get the seat folding option that would be available to you on smaller Mercedes four seat Cabriolet models, but a ski hatch is provided for longer items like skis. Mercedes wants this S-Class Cabriolet to be perceived as an exclusive choice in its segment, so perhaps predictably uh, has priced this improved version accordingly. At the introduction of the revised range, prices kicked off at around 118,000 for the S560 V8 469 horsepower variant featured here, which comes only in AMG line trim and costs about 12,000 pounds more than the equivalent S-Class Coupe model. Of course, the asking price figure just gave 
gave you will be little more than a starting point for many likely buyers, uh, people who will want to budget a little more for the extra touches that will make this model feel that bit more personal and exclusive. Now this particular one's extras boost its asking figure to around £135,000 and that's probably the kind of level that you need to be aiming at to get the car of your dreams. But then, if you're going to spend that kind of money, perhaps it's worth considering one of the sportier Mercedes-AMG versions. As before, there are two, the V8-powered S63, which now offers 612 horsepower, and from launch was priced at just over 142,000, and the V12-powered S65, for which you'll need a £200,000 budget, and that's a sum that not only buys you a quartet of extra cylinders, but also almost the entire contents of the Mercedes options list. It darn well should. Now before we get into how those prices compare to rival brands, it's worth taking a look at where this car fits into the Mercedes convertible model lineup. The brand does, after all, have two other open top models available at this kind of price point, although it does have to be pointed out that both are strict two-seaters, so they aren't really directly comparable to what's on offer here. Uh, you can, for instance, get basically the same 4-litre twin-turbo V8 engine used in this S560 model. Model, fitted to a Mercedes-AMG GT Roadster, costing £4,000 less. In addition, at the time of this improved S-Class Cabriolet's launch in late 2018, uh, the Stuttgart brand was still offering its older tech 5.5-litre AMG V8 in the Mercedes-AMG SL63 version of the SL Sports car. Uh, that contender is priced at about the same level as this S560 Cabrio, but it offers around 100 horsepower more. It's unlikely, though, that a typical S-Class Cabriolet customer will be considering either of those two alternative Mercedes models. Instead, he or she will probably have his or her sights set on alternative four-seat luxury convertibles that sit either just below or just above this car's price point. Now, now we we'll start with what some might see as this S560 model's closest rival, the M850i version of BMW's 8 Series convertible. That costs around 10,000 miles less than an S560, but it puts out 67 horsepower more, and it offers the four-wheel drive system that you can't have in this Mercedes. It doesn't quite have this S-Class model's exclusive feel, though. For that, you might think that something like a Maserati Grand Cabrio would be better suited. Now, the Italian contender would save you around £9,000 on this Merc, and its power output is similar to that of an S560, but it is a very old design with nothing like this Stuttgart model build quality. A few folk looking at this Mercedes in this segment might also be prepared to consider a Porsche 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet, uh, which does offer similar performance for just over £10,000 less, although that car's back seats are extremely cramped. The other alternatives that spring to mind are really more relevant to consider against the Mercedes-AMG versions of this S-Class model, principally the 604 horsepower V8-powered S63 variant, since the V12 S65 sells in vanishingly small numbers. Uh, just over £142,000 for an S-Class 63 Cabriolet is the kind of money that would put you in the market for some very tempting alternatives with similar levels of performance. About £5,000 less than that would get you a Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet, while around £17,000 more would get you an Aston Martin DB11 Volante, but neither car can offer the adult-sized rear seats that characterise this S-Class Cabriolet. Uh, Bentley's Continental GTC, that does better, but that car will probably cost you around £15,000 more than this one once you've taken everything into account. If having considered all of that, you conclude understandably that there really is nothing quite like an S-Class Cabriolet in this segment, then you'll want to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this S560 model comes only with AMG line trim, and that includes an AMG body styling package for the side skirts and the front and rear aprons, plus 19-inch five twin-spoke AMG alloy wheels. In addition, even at this level in the range, 
range. There is an LED intelligent light system for the headlamps and dual-like OLED organic light emitting diode rear lamps with 66 red rectangular slivers that offer a unique nighttime signature. Uh, the triple layer electrically powered fabric roof is of course standard as is the air cap wind deflector that powers out of the top of the windscreen frame to reduce turbulence on the move and there's also a wind deflector fitted behind the rear headrests too. Plus, of course, there's the latest Mercedes 9G Tronic Auto Transmission with gear shift paddles and Speed Tronic Cruise Control, Airmatic Air Suspension, and the brand's Dynamic Select Driving Mode System with its Comfort, Eco, Sport, Sport Plus, and individual options. What else is there in terms of standard kit? Well, we also really like the standard Magic Vision Control setup that heats the wiper blades and delivers water through them. Uh, the amount and the temperature determined by a clever calendar algorithm that varies its output with the different seasons. Uh, there is also a Parktronic Active Park Assist system and that will automatically steer you into spaces and it includes sensors front and rear and a reversing camera. Plus, in addition, more conventional luxury segment kit includes auto headlamps and wipers, keyless go comfort, keyless entry, uh, with a powered gesture controlled boot lid, uh, power folding mirrors, heat insulating infrared reflecting laminated glass, uh, a Thatcham category one alarm and metallic paint. Inside there's full leather upholstery offered in either black or if you like a lighter feel, porcelain espresso brown. And the front seats are not only heated and cooled and include electric adjustment with memory settings, uh, but they also feature the Mercedes Air Scarf uh, neck level heating system that you'll appreciate when you're top down on cold mornings because it vents warm air onto your head and neck area. Uh, the rear seats are heated too, and there's Thermotronic two zone climate control, there's ambient lighting with a choice of 64 color settings. There's an auto dimming rear view mirror. There's a wireless phone charger and there's a multifunction Napa leather trimmed steering wheel. Uh, you also get a 12.3 inch instrument binnacle screen to replace the conventional dials and the virtual gauges can be customized with three display styles, classic, sport and progressive. Uh, this sits alongside the further 12.3 inch center dash screen that's provided for the standard command online infotainment system, uh, which features, well, rather a lot. Uh, for a start, there's a media interface that offers Lingvatronic voice control, SD card and USB ports, and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone integration. Um, via the command setup, you can use HDD hard disk satellite navigation with a 3D display. You can Bluetooth link your mobile phone, get live traffic information, uh, uh, set up a speed limiter, use Mercedes apps and get in-car internet access for Facebook, internet radio, news and weather reports and Google map routing. Plus there are all the usual stereo functions with a DAB digital radio, a DVD player, a 10 gigabyte music register and a glorious 13 speaker, nine channel Burmester audio setup that uses an ingenious front bass system. Now this takes the front bass speakers from their usual position in the doors and mounts them in aluminium structures in front of the footwells, which then become resonance chambers, delivering crisp concert hall standard sound, even at the fastest speed. Command also includes another feature that we really like, what Mercedes calls car to x communication. Now this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system, which will see your S-Class sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. Talking of cutting edge information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your car from your smartphone. Uh, every S-Class Cabriolet comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect services package, and that works via a free app. Now this will remind you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. Now in addition, the app gives you a one touch button for fast breakdown recovery, uh, an alarm feature that'll tell you when your parking meter is just about to expire, and an emergency call system that will automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. 
Plus, you'll be able to lock or unlock your car from wherever you are and locate your vehicle's position if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. Uh, now, if you're brave enough to lend your S-Class Cabriolet out, a geofencing feature will alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if the car's ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show its position anywhere in the world. S-Class buyers also get a year's free subscription to the Mercedes Me concierge service that provides telephone support if you're searching for interesting locations, restaurants or hotels. Business buyers will also particularly like the command system's included in-car office feature. And that's another Mercedes Me Connect service, which allows uh, drivers use of certain office functions directly in the vehicle and access to important data, almost as if they were in their office. Uh, in-car office uses, for example, the locations of calendar entries and automatically transfers these to the car's navigation system. Uh, the user can also dial into a telephone conference on the basis of a calendar entry uh, and then the system will automatically detect the required pin access code before simultaneously dialing it. All that's needed is an active data connection. Uh, that covers all the standard S560 stuff, but for most likely customers with this particular variant, that won't be quite enough. And the majority are likely to pay the extra £5,000 that Mercedes asks for the premium equipment line package, which is only offered on this base derivative. Now with this, you get upgraded Nappa leather upholstery, a 360 degree surround view camera system, an air balance package, which includes a fragrance generator and an oxygen ionizer. Uh, massaging multi-contour front seats, mirror projection, the brand logo, onto the ground at night, and an energizing comfort package. Now, that last feature is new to this revised S-Class Cabriolet model, and it coordinates the climate control, the fragrance dispenser, the music and interior lighting with seat heating, cooling, and massage into six expertly configured programs. It's a, a one-touch route into complete interior serenity. So that's covered off the S560, but what about the Mercedes AMG models? Well, if you're going to pay the best part of £150,000 for the S63 version of this car, you'd want quite a bit more, and you get it. In addition to all the S560 equipment items, uh, the Mercedes AMG variants give you as standard most of the elements included in that premium equipment line package that we were just talking about. Plus, in addition, you do at S63 level also get a package of features that befit a really high performance sporting car. Things like an AMG sports exhaust system with selectable sound, a race tuned AMG speed shift MCT version of the nine speed auto gearbox, an AMG sports damping version of that airmatic air suspension setup, uh, an AMG high performance composite braking system and AMG sports steering. Uh, as for the aesthetic stuff, well, there is a bespoke AMG Pan America front grille. There are special 20 inch AMG wheels, an S63 specific front apron featuring a front splitter, and an AMG styled rear apron in black with matte silver side sill panels. Uh, inside an S63, there's an AMG sports steering wheel and AMG sports pedals. There's also the driving assistance package of camera driven safety and autonomous driving features that we'll cover off in a minute. And finally, for completeness, uh, let's cover off the extra features you get in the Mercedes-AMG S65 V12 engine version of this model, over and above those fitted to the S63. Uh, the V12 variant does without the newer nine-speed auto gearbox fitted to the other S-Class Cabriolet derivatives. It sticks instead with the older 7G Tronic setup tweaked with AMG Speed Shift Plus technology. However, as you would expect for the near £200,000 asking price, it does get quite a few nice to have features that you'd have to pay extra for on the lesser models. Now these include the addition of 47 Swarovski crystals into the LED intelligent light system, which give the headlamps a unique glinting beam at night. Plus, as standard, S65 buyers get a head-up display, uh, a warmth comfort package, which heats the steering wheel and the door armrests, um, a garage door opener, which is integrated into the rear view mirror, an upgraded high-end 3D 25 speaker, 27 channel, 1560 watt version of the Burmester sound system, and an exclusive Nappa leather package, which covers the upholstery and the doors in gorgeous quilted hide and includes 
Dynamica microfiber trimming for the roof lining and the sun visors. Uh, this level of the range, you also get the Night View Assist Plus system, which uses military developed night vision technology so you can more clearly see people and animals in the dark. Uh, exterior visual tweaks for the S65 include polished chrome twin tailpipes for the exhaust system and bespoke finishing for the front and rear sections of the AMG body styling kit. Enough with standard features across the range, what about options? Well, if you stuck with the entry-level S560 model that we're testing today, many, although not all, of the really nice options just mentioned as part of that Mercedes AMG standard spec can be fitted at extra cost. Uh, this particular car, for example, has the Swarovski Crystal LED intelligent light system, which costs nearly £3,000, and the Night View Assist Plus system, which costs over £2,000. Well, why are you splashing? out, why not just find over £5,000 more for the upgraded 27-speaker Burmester 3D sound system we just mentioned. As you'll see, you're going to need deep pockets to specify this car to your liking. You're going to want to make the look and feel of this car very bespoke to your taste. Now we've said that metallic paint is standard, we have uh, iridium silver here, but some buyers go further and pay extra to choose from Mercedes range of more exclusive Designio paint shades. Uh, once you've finalised your ideal exterior colour, you're going to need to match that to your chosen hood colour. Uh, as you can see, we've got a dark blue fabric top here, but you could alternatively choose a hood in either black, beige or dark red. Wheel choice, of course, is key too. There are various different 20 inch alloy rim styles available across the range. Uh, you're going to want to apply equal thought to the interior finishing of your Ice Class Cabriolet. Uh, this S560 model has been fitted out with the extra cost exclusive Napa leather package, which costs over £6,000 on this variant. Uh, this upholstery package can be had in black, brown, or as here in crystal grey and black. If you're a more extrovert type, there is a Bengal red leather option, and we rather like the alternative light porcelain finish, which can be had with classy pipe in either red, brown or deep sea blue. Uh, once that's sorted, you can turn your attention to fascia trimming. Uh, the dash panel comes trimmed in either black poplar or brown burr wood finishes as standard, but at extra cost, you can alternatively have silk matte grey ash, Designio black piano lacquer, or if you really want to push the boat out and find nearly £4,000 more, AMG carbon fibre piano black lacquer. Uh, finally, you might want to look at upgrading the rather plain standard steering wheel uh, there is a combination wood and leather option, but if you don't want something quite so old-fashioned, then tick the box that gets you the part Dynamica microfiber trimmed AMG performance steering wheel for that authentic DTM style feel. What else uh, might tempt you on the options list? Well, you'll probably want the car telephony package, which adds a telephone module and a SIM card reader into the glove compartment and which boosts your handset signal through the car's aerial. Uh, there's also a TV tuner and a CD drive if you still want to play your old discs. Um, now, if you regularly leave your car for long periods, say at airports, then you might want the charger with trickle charge function. Now that uh, tests, charges and revives the battery, even when it's flat. Uh, other practical options include a shallow boot tub, uh, a concertina ring, load seal protector, a bespoke cool box and all season floor mats. If you've decided on one of the Mercedes AMG models, you might want the AMG driver's package, which increases top speed from the normal electronically governed 155 miles an hour figure to 186 mph. Uh, the brand charges nearly £2,000 for that on an S63, which does seem an awful lot for a software tweak. Uh, talking of the Mercedes AMG variants, let's finish our review of extra cost options by telling you that three styling packages are available to S63 and S63. 65 buyers. The AMG Night Package uh, finishes key exterior elements in high gloss black, namely the front apron A-wing, uh, the tailpipe trim, the exterior mirror housings, the side sill panels and the rear apron. With the alternative AMG Exterior Carbon Fibre Package, most of the same elements can be finished in carbon fibre. And you can get a combination of the two packages too for the ultimate mean exterior look. And for that finishing touch, why don't you add in the optional red painted brake calipers. 
Enough with that, uh, let's switch to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes with S-Class models. Uh, let's give you some highlights from the roster here. Uh, now, when this S-Class Cabriolet was first launched in 2014, autonomous braking was a novel and noteworthy feature. Now it's an item that's fitted to virtually everything the brand makes. Uh, this car's system being badged Collision Prevention Assist Plus, and as usual, it uses a forward-facing camera to scan the road ahead for potential nose to tail collisions, warning you and priming the brakes if one's detected. Uh, now, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, the car will automatically brake itself to reduce the severity of any potential resulting accident. And of course, there's much more. All variants get crosswind assist that helps to stabilize the car in sudden side gusts of wind and steer control steering assist that helps you to keep the wheel straight at cruising speeds. Uh, attention assist will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and the pre-safe program uh, will tighten the seat belts, it'll close the windows and it'll even adjust the seats in a fraction of a second if the stability system deems an accident is inevitable. The anti-whiplash Neck Pro head restraints will help here too. As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too, including acceleration skid control and curve dynamic assist systems built in as part of the ESP stability control setup. Of course, you get traffic sign assist, which can read traffic signs as you pass them and display them on the dash. Plus, there's the emergency call system that, as we mentioned earlier, is part of that Mercedes Me Connect services package and uh, automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, there is also an active bonnet to protect pedestrians, uh, ice fixed uh, rear child seat fixings, and the usual twin front side and curtain airbags. Going further requires a specification of the Extra Cost Driving Assistance Plus package, and that's a box that you almost certainly want to tick because without it, you won't be able to use any of the autonomous driving technology which has been built into this improved S-Class Cabriolet model. Now that's been usefully improved over the Drive Pilot autonomous system that was originally introduced into the mid-sized E-Class range so that this S-Class can now uh, drive itself on a much greater variety of roads with no driver input, save for a brief touch on the steering wheel every few seconds so you can reassure those electronics that you're still awake. Uh, now the main enhancements are based around the way that um, radar feedback has now been combined with sat-nav data so that the car knows in advance to slow for corners and roundabouts and it can uh, automatically brake itself to a halt for say a toll booth or a T-junction. Now Mercedes calls this route based based speed adjustment. To use the autonomous driving capability, you'll need to be on a dual carriageway and you'll have to have activated two of the elements included in the driving assistance package, active distance assist, distronic and active steering assist. Uh, now the distronic feature is basically a uh, super advanced adaptive cruise control that automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Uh, using a further active speed limit assist feature, it can also be set to adapt itself to the limits featured on speed signs that you pass. Um, active steering assist keeps you in the centre of your designated lane and it will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, now, if you ignore this, warning signals from another of the pack's features, active lane keeping assist will tell you that your S-Class Cabriolet has uh, inadvertently wandered over the lane in delineating lines. Now, if you're trying the autonomous driving capability, then you'll also want to experience the clever active lane changing assist system. Now, on a dual carriageway with the active distance assist distronic cruise control and the active steering assist operating, the car will overtake by itself. Yes, really. Uh, just hold the indicator stalk for a couple of seconds and it'll pull out to pass a slower vehicle and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do that. 
Now another included driving assistance plus package feature is the evasive steering assist feature which uh, scans the road ahead for pedestrians and supports you in making uh, sudden maneuvers to avoid them. Uh, pedestrian safety that is also targeted by the active braking assist system. Now that builds on that uh, previously mentioned collision prevention assist plus autonomous braking functionality by instantly warning you and then throwing on the anchors in emergency situations which not only include wayward people but also unexpected tailbacks and crossing traffic. Uh, there's more in the Driving Assistance Plus Package 2. Active Blind Spot Assist will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. And the pack also includes an upgraded PreSafe Plus version of the PreSafe system that we mentioned earlier. Now that better protects you in a rear end collision. Uh, with the PreSafe Plus setup, inflatable bolsters inside the seats put more space between those inside the car and whatever might be just about to smash into it. It's all very reassuring. Clearly the heart transplant changes that have taken place with this revised S-Class Cabriolet have been enacted in the name of efficiency. Although with the entrance switch from NEDC to WLTP official testing cycles, it's rather difficult to gauge just how much has been achieved. Still, you'd think that for the V8 variants, a switch from the old 4.7 or 5.5 litre engines to this current model's use of a 4 litre twin turbo power would represent a decent step in the right direction. It certainly made this car a far more efficient thing than some exotic rivals in this class. Cars which, rather unfairly, seem to be routinely judged by a rather different efficiency standard. That, though, is the reality of life in this segment. Buyers don't seem to care that, say, an open-top Bentley Continental will chug out far more CO2 than this Mercedes will, and it'll routinely struggle to crack even a relatively modest 20 miles per gallon combined cycle fuel target. In contrast, this S560 Cabriolet uh, delivers up to 27.2 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 233 grams per kilometer of CO2. Now true, that is a fraction less than you get from a rival BMW M850i convertible, but it's still a pretty good showing from an open-topped luxury cruiser weighing around 2.2 tons, and it should guarantee you a decent range from the 80 litre fuel tank. For the S63 S-Class Cabriolet variant, you're looking at up to 23.9 mpg and up to 250 grams per kilometer. The less said about the V12 engined S65 version, though the better, it stats at 18.6 mpg and 325 grams per kilometer. I mean, you can hardly upset Greenpeace more if you attached a whale harpooning gun to the bonnet. All the figures we've just given you, by the way, are based on readings calculated using the latest WLTP World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure Cycle, but the stats have been converted back to the most recent new European driving cycle, NEDC 2 spec, since that's what a lot of rival models are still using. So why does a Mercedes in this sector enjoy such a significant running cost advantage over some of its more exotically branded rivals? Well, it's basically down to a different level of engineering. The aluminium hybrid body shell, the sleek drag coefficient, and the intelligent nine-speed auto gearbox with its really high cruising ratio and its gliding function that temporarily decouples the engine from the drivetrain when you lift off the throttle. The efficient electromechanical steering setup and an eco engine stop start system obviously also help. Then there's the clever design of the 4 litre twin turbo V8 power plant as developed as part of Mercedes Blue Direct engine family. Uh, the really neat element here lies in the fact that the two turbos have been moved from their usual position on the outside of the cylinder banks and placed instead within the cylinder V. Now this means that uh, this Euro 60 engine can be smaller, slighter, uh, more responsive and cleaner. Now unfortunately on this Cabriolet model you don't get the cylinder deactivation system that you would find on an equivalent V8 powered S-Class Coupe. Apparently Mercedes were concerned that it would soften the 4 litre engine's characteristic burble to an extent that would be unduly noticeable when you were travelling roof down. And that gives you, well, a pretty clear perspective as to this car's efficiency priorities.
still in the unlikely event that you are interested in maximizing running cost returns there's plenty provided to help you do it obviously to get anywhere near the returns that we've quoted you'll need to set the dynamic select driving mode system into its eco setting now this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and it also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating uh, the heated rear window and the air conditioning uh, you can also bring up two options in the instrument binnacle that'll help uh, a consumption screen shows your average fuel figure and an eco display grades your driving based on acceleration uh, decelerating and constancy of speed showing in real time the bonus frugality that you've achieved through careful driving since you started your trip uh, there's also a fuel consumption section on the fascia's command central display screen that uh, gives you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum efficiency what else? Well, do bear in mind that all versions of this car will, of course, be subject to the government's tax levy for models costing over £40,000. That means road tax will stand at £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. And the other thing that we need to tell you is that the rather unremarkable three-year unlimited mileage warranty is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, uh, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have the car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's also worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by uh, going for the optional service care package uh, which takes care of routine maintenance spreading the cost of regular servicing guaranteeing the price of parts and labor for up to four services and covering the cost of all recommended service items like brake fluid spark plugs air filters uh, fuel filters and screen wash there's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visits due. It's also worth mentioning that the included Mercedes Me Connect Services package includes remote self-diagnosis capability, uh, which enables your S-Class Cabriolet to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. Uh, you can also insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers will have that included in their lease cost. If you do have to pay the insurance yourself, uh, then you'll need to know that all S-Class Cabriolet variants, as you might expect, are rated at a top of the shop group 50. As for the question of residual values, well, you can't expect too much from a full luxury segment cabriolet, and you'll certainly need to manage your expectations quite a lot when it comes to the Mercedes AMG models. This S560 variant, though, should perform as well, if not better, than obvious premium brand sector rivals, up at around 45% after three years and 60,000 miles. Mercedes makes many open top cars. Here though is the one that best captures the luxury and heritage of this famous brand. And before living with an S-Class Cabriolet, we were, we will admit, a little skeptical about its charms. After all, if you've earned enough to pretty much buy a Bentley, isn't it logical to simply go ahead and buy one rather than opt for what critics would see as a Cabriolet version of a mere 75,000 pound luxury saloon? The thing is though, this convertible S-Class model is far more than that. It has its own unique appeal. From the jewel-like Swarovski crystal LED headlamps to the sculpted silhouette, and the little touches like the stylized finish of the switch gear and the Burmester speaker covers, it's modern, memorable, and magnificent, with a level of technology that embarrasses the traditional exotic brands. And it offers something that apparently more exclusive Cabriolet products can't match, properly comfortable rear seating for two adults who will luxuriate in this car, even on really long trips. Can any other cabriolet in the world offer more space in its rearmost chairs? Well, we can't think of one. Of course, for the money being asked here, this S-Class Cabriolet needs a unique selling point. You won't buy this car for handling involvement, but that's fine. This model has been engineered to lower, not to raise your heartbeat. Its objective being to deliver superbly comfortable open-top transport in the truest grand touring tradition. 
the autonomous driving technology which has been introduced into this revised model fits perfectly into that brief, as does the extra refinement of the new V8 engines. It is disappointing though that Mercedes still hasn't been able to engineer into right-hand drive versions of this car the four-wheel drive system which comes as standard on BMW and Bentley rivals for a winter weather peace of mind. And in summary, well, Bentley and Aston Martin customers want to be noticed. S-Class Cabriolet customers don't need to be. Here lies a different level of exclusivity, and perhaps this car epitomizes it.